Good afternoon, my name is Nick D for VIS. Welcome to Ashes of Libertad. This is a mod focus on South and Latin America. As as you can see, nuclear war has broken out and it's 1967 and the United States is fucking destroyed. The Red Army is stuck here in Cuba and we are going to be focusing on Brazil, specifically the state of Sao Paulo. And I'll explain more when we get on the map and I'll see you guys uh when that happens okay first things first uh let me also just show there is a music mod and it's playing in the background but i'm gonna pause it because i don't want to be copyrighted by some brazilian music company but uh starting off let's let me show the situation in brazil it's divided between the brazilian federative republic and the united states of brazil basically it's been a five year long civil war as you can see let me read the modifier that i think all brazilian all um, like these two major brazilian states uh have uh the knocked out giant there's a popular expression that, that used to often that is used to often come out and they wait there's a popular expression that used to often come out in patriotic times of old the giant has awakened it was usually said when families gathered around the radio to listen to a football match Hurdling together is one uh, to cheer for Brazil. Back when it was two, was one. The Its meaning goes deeper than that. However, the giant Brazil and its people seem to rarely show their full potential. Waking up only once a few decades, such as in 1945, when it honorably intervened in World War II. In 1960, 1960, I'm sorry, I had to take a break to get some water. Uh, when Juscelino made it look unrecognizably intelligent, at any other given time, the giant lays dormant. The Brazilian people watch mutely as generals and politicians dictate their lives, acting as silent spectators as armies walk, march on the streets and clash against one another in the countryside. They have always been largely indifferent to the goings on of Brasilia, Rio, or anywhere where else such was the occasion in 1963 when the military attempted to hastily put together coup d'etat against the galactic presidency leading to a five lengthy years of civil war marked by a distinct flag commitment by the people of both sides and restricted merely to infrequent military engagements truthfully there were bigger things to worry about the nuclear winter that accompanied the civil war and breakdown in international trade brought famine and desperation to the people leaving them to care little about a few armed forces half a country away the lack of de devotion from the population scarcity of resources to carry out the unexpectedly long-lasting war didn't just make the giant fall asleep it made it so he knocked himself out both sides of the conflict lay exhausted from the fight mined by enemies on all sides star for bullets men food and loyalty the civil war drained the giant of his strength the brazilian colossus lies torn on the floor bathed on his own blood shed by himself the hunt and the republic must now rest and gather their power before deciding how this will end by forgiving and reuniting or risk killing the giant in the name of ideology Theology. and i think i just showed this but you can uh, you can see jao goulart is here and then you also have the junta or arena c yeah they're the military junta and they control brasilia and now let's look at the let's look at the other states in brazil you have the the miners revolt here polina i'll just call it that they got a lot of stuff but they don't have any uh, content yet uh, then you have us we are a relatively neutral state in fact most of our content's going to be about, yeah, fighting between ALN support, arena support, Republican support, and then constitutionalist support. And um, let me show more on the map, and then I'll, I'll get started reading our events. Uh, I'm here for another, by here, I mean, I'm on winter break till the 21st, so I got a lot of time to cover this. Uh, so now let's look at the rest of South America. Argentina and Chile, they're doing pretty all right. Peru, not so well. You can see uh, Cusco is controlled by a faction of the like one of these guerrilla groups. As you can see, Che Guevara, che Guevara is very, very large and controls a large chunk of rural Bolivia and the Amazons. But this area is relatively unpopulated. As you can see, most of the population center is held by uh, Bolivia, the Bolivian government. Um, let me also try to find yeah here we go yeah we have the look at this that's that's posadism uh fourth international posadism is a trotskyist international it was founded in 1962 by jay posadas who had been the leader of a latin america bureau of the fourth international in the 1950s and of the fourth international section in argentina posadas rightfully believed that a nuclear catastrophe 
catastrophe would spark the world revolution predicted by Marx, but if sadism is highly interested in scientific progress and how can be how it can improve human lives when used for the common good rather than profit. And you can see, yeah, this is like a little think tank, Posadist think tank stuck in Machu Picchu, Peru. Uh, speaking of Peru, I think the, yeah, the Peruvian government's all the way down here in the south. Yeah, that's a little funny. Uh, then we have the Andean Union, which is, I think, another remnant of the Peruvian government. Then you have some, some mercenaries here, the Regency Council of Nueva, Nueva Castilla. But we also, uh, you can see here in, uh, in like the Amazonian jungle, you have the Acre Republic, who were the first people to get content in this mod. And I played them. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really find them fun. You have some guerrilla groups. Uh, you have some, uh, you have the FARC right here. Colombia is in a civil war. Pretty unsurprising. And then you have the CIA down here. They have their own little site. You can see, who is this guy? We don't know. Uh repressive military occupation and uh yeah the cia is just redacted redacted only ten thousand people are here but it's i think it's a bunch of agents who just fled you have some mercenaries you have natives uh, tribes let's see uh yeah into the fog tribal wars the another nation that's got contests this the confederation uh the confederation satania they, uh, I, I haven't played them, but the, the tree's a lot bigger than this, I know that. But we are Sao Paulo. Uh, we are right in, in between the Junta and the Republic, and we're right next to a big miners' revolt, and we're holding on to one of the, like, the most important cities in Brazil. And so, first of all, let me read the demographics of Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo's immense population is the only thing stopping a military event, intervention by the Fourth Republic, or military Junta, which are both which are both two military exhausted to support a military occupation or a state. Uh, while it has a majority hostile demographic, should the population start to side either side, it will uh, surely lead to an invasion and the death of the revolution. To ensure the integrity of the state, we must ensure that the people are united in a single cause. The screen will help you keep track of the people's loyalty and involvement in the second constitutionalist revolution. The population is divided along ideological, occupation, geographical, and wealth lines. Having all of them on your side will greatly benefit the state for when fighting comes. Uh, the Junta and the Fourth Republic will attempt a military intervention. Their respective ideologies surpass 70%. You can see a uh, campaign of focused targets. we got the upper, middle, and lower class. Bureaucrats, intellectuals, landers, clergy, polistanos, which I think is our like, faction. Capiras and Prianos. If someone speaks Portuguese, please tell me what that means. Uh, let me also, let's read our modifiers before we start on our focus tree. Uh, okay, the Second Constitutionalist Revolution. Adam Meyer's last and greatest gamble, the Second Constitutionalist Revolution since shockwaves across Brazil, despite its lack of direct bloodshed. Its declaration came after the Fourth Republic's refusal to hold election. The former Southeastern Military Command and its forces were convinced by Governor Adam Meyer de Barros to break away from the Loyalist Army, declaring its late neutrality in the Brazilian Civil War. Its rule goals are hazy, to say the least, and it's hard to save. If its spokesperson really believes in them or is merely taking advantage of the Paulista patriotism for his gain, regardless of Adam Meyer's detentions, meticulous propaganda efforts, and surgical police actions secured uh, the initial support of the Paulista people and sparked a new sense of duty and responsibility for the state. Slowly but surely, the revolution's namesake goal is becoming mainstream to uphold the Brazilian constitution at any cost necessary, which can either be a useful tool Sao Paulo seeks to truly follow its course or a massive problem for its corrupt governor. And then uh, let's look at uh, stolen institutions. Like many other Brazilian states, Sao Paulo lives in a nebulous state of independence, neither under the Fourth Republic nor Junta's control, but still depending on institutions established before the governmental collapse, like the state police and administration. Uniquely, however, Sao Paulo is big and developed enough to sustain itself and the institution within its borders. It's just a matter of cleaning up the confusion and cutting off the last remaining ties to Rio and Brasilia so that our operation 
can truly be independent. Uh, then the devil in the bottle. Here to some terrorist to others, Carlo Marighella, leader of the communist urban guerrilla ALM, the Alliance for the Liberation of the Nation, is currently being held prisoner by the state police and awaiting trial, accused of everything from bank robbing to high treason. Uh, Mar Marighella is probably one of the most dangerous men in the state. The people now sleep state See, sleep safe knowing that the boogeyman of Sao Paulo lies safely behind bars, soon never to be a problem again. Then, shattered economy. The state's economy, heavily based on coffee exports and imports from beyond the sea, lies destroyed by the isolation we have now brought upon ourselves. With the Republican Junta teaming up to embargo us in a clear attempt to sway our numerous resources and population toward their treacherous schemes, to save the Constitution, we must turn this around and reclaim our peace as the richest state in Brazil, even if by dubious ways. And we are led by the party Partido Social Progressista, and we are reactionary. So now, let's do our first focus. Uh, the second constitutionalist revolution is uh, 1932, when the tyrannical forces of Vargas seized the presidency, the good folk of Sao Paulo rose in rebellion. From near and far, men flocked to the streets, donating all they had to join effort to preserve the integrity of democracy and uphold the legitimacy of the Brazilian constitution. They failed. The Brazilian Cadillo would reign despite the police effort to stop him, but now a chance of redemption showed itself. The heir of Argus, President Yael Gallart, dragged our honorable state into a senseless fratricide in the name of democracy, only to, like the tyrants before him, spit in its face. We're not going to take it. The second constitutionalist revolution is at hand, and this time we'll show that it is uh, a shameful excuse or an honorable cause. Well, actually, it's both, uh, according to the focus. Now, let's look at our little tech tree. You can see uh, they're still working on it. And you can see that this is like a base game tech. But then it gets into the unique ones, and this is pretty cool. Uh, let me see the support companies. Great War Tank. Yeah, this is, this is a car with some sandbags on it. Let's see. Uh, Eric, yeah. Remember, this mod uh, just recently uh, released again. It was, uh, they, they did a lot of work on the Acre Republic, and then it went silent, and then this update just dropped a while ago, while, by a while, I think like a week or so, so I don't even have to make a pause, because I think once the day passes, we'll get this, and the Constitutionalist Revolution is, the second Constitutionalist Revolution's ideals can come from the belief that neither side of the Civil War is legitimate, and that true democracy will have to come from the alternative itself. The seeds for its creations was planted by the Republican indefinite cancellation of presidential elections due to the unexpectedly lengthy civil war, which the citizens of Sao Paulo saw betrayal their beliefs and the bloodshed by their countrymen. The revolution's birth was relatively bloodless, yet haphazardly executed, and its footing is still yet to be found as many loyalties still find themselves laying within the two opposite, opposing poles of this conflict. Some are the opinion that Anamari the Barros, the architect of the revolution and current government of Governor of Sao Paulo is in this merely for the money and power. While it is true that he enjoys both of these things, the thing he wants above all else is peace. Peace for Sao Paulo from the ravages of this conflict, and peace for himself from the stress of war. This war of attrition tolls on his mind, but many fear pacifism and won't save Sao Paulo. As for now, the future is uncertain. Sao Paulo uh, hinges on a single pedestal, its people. Even without a standing revolutionary army, the state's population is so massive that even that they exhausted outside illegitimate forces and no hope of retaking it without their support. The state may yet tumble towards either side of the conflict, ending its fragile peace, and must now find its foot and rise to the full potential of the wish to survive amongst giants. A new hope or a big lie? Now let's do a shameful excuse. Pathetic, really. Truth be told, this was never about democracy. It has always been about the money. Brazil is a, moder is a marvel of architecture. Rio may be the historical heart of the nation, but Nate Trupalista knows that they both pale in comparison with the industrial capital of Brazil, the colossal city of Drizzle, Sao Paulo. With the economy devastated and the war drained men and resources, the situation has never been so dire before. Something has to be made. The revolution was the answer found by Governor Adam. Adamar, its greatest gamble so far, and its new biggest problem. And we'll get a shameless excuse. Uh, no, let me also check production. We have no production. Okay, uh, 
The second constitutional, constitutionalist revolution, just like the Cooping cool, guerrillas or Brazilian, the Commie Republicans of the South, is nothing but a shameless excuse. At a mind that treason's dog is harnessing the ire of its people to fill his own po pockets, living in peace like a king while his regime is spitting on our families. On our land, on our communities, on our people, the police, the people. Edomar steal but delivers to borrow. Has a long, long political career, going so far as taking part in Sao Paulo's first attempt at revolution in 1932. The only consistent thing about it, is, it all is that nothing he's ever done has been for the benefit of the people, only of himself, and this is no exception. The elites of Sao Paulo suffered much during the war while it raged on its doorstep, uh, seeking their, seeing their beautiful beautifully pruned gardens on fire, made them shed almost as many tears as the dying poor, and so forced them to act in defense of the riches. They wanted a way out, Adamio was the tool, and the revolution was their master plan. A shameful excuse to use the people's national pride to get them out the war. Time will tell if Adamir will maintain this facade, create cave in to the growing nationalism of the revolutionaries he gave birth to, or fall victory to his own escape plan. A new hope, or a big lie. And now let's do an honorable cause. The right- oh. Could I get this? I could start it, but... Oh, okay, let me do... Uh, the rightful path for Brazil is just logical. Sao Paulo is and has been for almost a century the true heart of Brazil. Not the newcomer Brasilia, or God forbid, the horror, horrid Porto Alegre. Taking the helm of the nation and steering it back to its rightful course is nothing but a historical correction. It is not national salvation. It is, it, if not national salvation, with the clause of Castillo Branco and Goulart, as feeble as it now, the Constitutionalist Revolution inspires its men to be better and to follow the footsteps of their forefathers and search for a better tomorrow. It, it is the future of Brazil, like it or not. It will get an honorable cause, and I think, uh, yeah, requires all the following. Yeah, so I was thinking it would be like this, where we had to complete both sides. But I actually, I found that I, I, I test played this, and I didn't even notice that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the second constitutionalist revolution, although its origins are dubious, is an honorable cause. The cooping guerrilla, cooing guerrillas of Brazil want to tear down our democracy and kill the Brazilian Republic. And those self proclaimed Republican charlatans of the South are much different when they themselves rep repress our blood earned freedom. Democracy won't survive with either of them in charge, and as a result, we'll have to take matters into our own hands in Sao Paulo. The Paulista people are dedicated to, that, to these ideals, although our leadership may not change share our same fervor. We have the potential to rebuild Brazil, but before we, we do, we need clear heads with clear cut goals. There's still much time for leaders to rise and heroes to be born on the battlefield for ranks of dedicated men from all walks of life, united in a cause greater than themselves, greater than Sao Paulo, greater than Brazil itself. The idea of freedom preserving Persevering in a dying world, Sao Paulo will be a beacon that builds Brazil once again, no matter the cost. A new hope or a big lie. Now let's get uh, the police to betrayal. When Sao Paulo declared its late neutrality in the Brazilian Civil War, the headlines uh, in the Republican newspaper did not read glorious revolutions they should. Instead, they read the police to betrayal. Our exit from the conflict caused as much desperation in the Republic as it did hope in the junta, who idiotically we will join in their cause. Our exit did not, our exit has not been completely uncontested. Republican troops are still inside our soils. Our police mobilize themselves. A possible conflict is boiling quickly, something neither we nor the Republic can afford so early. Thankfully, we have time to negotiate our neutrality. It all hangs on Guanabara, and we'll get the Constitutionalist Revolution is. And I'll actually, I'll keep this running because uh, there's some events that'll pop up. Yeah, like this. Peru is trying to take back Cusco, and the Kingston Uprising has been defeated by the West Indies Federation. Uh, by cornering Cusco, the ELN's last stand, gunfire erupted on the streets of Cusco as the long and dragging conflict comes to an end. The uh, Ejercito uh, de Liberación Nacional, Peru, Peruna, Peruno, I think that's just Council of Liberate, National Liberation for Peru, enjoyed a relative success in the years following 1962, suffering the wave of revolutions that swept the Indian world. Peak with the capture of Cusco, the Elon now stands as a shadow of its former self, uh, having lost much of its original founding fathers to years of guerrilla war, and more recently to a wave of defections to surrender that include leading figures such as uh, what, Javier uh, Hrond, Juan Chang and Luis Zapata, the few who remain fortify themselves in the renovated rooms of Sa Sa uh, Sacsayhuaman, 
and the surrounding mountains, uh, vowing to die as, as martyrs, unite by ideology or on commentary. Defecting guerrilla fighters blamed ELNN's failure and lack of cooperation, and a competition for members between revolutionary groups such as the ERN. Hector meets a Trojan fate. And with that, I'm Nick D4VIS. Please let me know if you guys want me to continue the series. I probably will. Uh, it is a very, very interesting scenario. Uh, and I really like you I really like mods that take like regions that are often overlooked and like put a spotlight on them, especially since South America is very, very neglected. But anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.